a wooden horse in Troy that changed the course of history. The water pipes and the city walls for the slick city of Troy. The Troy of King Priamos where Achilles fought with Hector. And the interesting walls which lead us into the town. When you go around the corner it becomes impossible to attack the city with a battering ram. When you come around you meet the city wall. As we go into the town of Troy, we have several artifacts lying around which has been excavated since 1870s by Schliemann, the German architect. And it has been under restoration in the last 10 years as they are rebuilding some of the old artifacts like these mud brick homes. The Megaron houses of Troy one city on top of the other as we have nine cities and a ramp that leads you into the second city of Troy where the treasures of King Priamos were found and walls of a sixth city palace and the sacrificial area for the town of Troy. The Odeon Theatre of the Ninth City of Troy leads us to the door where the fight between Achilles and Hector took place. And that is known as the South Gate. Hector, Hector. Nearby Troy is the Intepe Mayor's office where the latest protocol that was signed between Intepe Mayor and Nemi Mayor which is near Rome in Italy. Italians have discovered that their ancestors go back to Troy. So this is a very important message to all the old Romans in the world. It's time to go home and to go to Troy. Also across from the Turkish-Greek borderline where we have the township of Kavala is where some of the people of this town of Intepe moved to, to the township of Aspravalta. So these two mayors have signed these documents declaring these two cities as sister cities. A very important message in this troubled part of the world, bringing different groups of people together and declaring them friendship in between themselves. Çanakkale is now where we have to go back to Istanbul over the strait in order to reach into Yarımburgaz caves off this busy highway by the Küçük Çekmece Lake we have this ancient cave that has been recently dug out by the Canadian McGill University people in 1989. They have recently DNA tested the findings which are now in the archaeological museum in Istanbul declaring this place to be 400,000 years old, the oldest settlement in all of Europe. Along the seafront town of Tekirda, along the shores of the Sea of Marmara, we have a mobile 7-Eleven in front of the Rakochi house. Prince Rakochi was a freedom fighter who lost to the Habsburg family in 1711 for the freedom of his country, Hungary, and then had to fled his country and he found retreat in the old Ottoman Empire, first coming to Istanbul and then to Tekirda. And he lived in this house between the years of 1720 and 35. When he died here, they turned this place into a museum, which is what it is, with some old Turkish carpets of the 18th century, decorating it with these divans, and the furniture all belonging to the 18th century. Beautiful stained glass windows and colored pottery, as well as the daily usage room. And we move on to the Maidos Bay, en route to Çanakkale once again, completing the northern portion. We're now getting ready to enter the Anzac Museum in Dardanelles. This is the friendliest war of all times, as some experts have called it, where almost some 600,000 men 
either were killed or they were missing in action or they were wounded. This fight took place in Gallipoli starting in the month of March 18, 1915. But then the Anzac landing took place on the 25th morning of April 1915. These are some of those relics belonging to those soldiers who were wounded or lost their lives fighting for their countries. The idea of the Chanakale Gallipoli campaign was to go through Dardanelles and make a link with the Russians. As the Allied force could not succeed this, that really brought an end to the the regime of the Tsar and in 1917 they pulled out of the war and then the Bolsheviks took over in Russia. These are some of those things found in the excavated sections of Gallipoli, a war when it was fought in the township of the Anzac landing area. It really was in between the trenches some 25 feet apart and now we are going to the Anzac portion. Those heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives, you are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us, where they lie side by side here in this country of ours. You, the mothers who sent their sons from faraway countries, Wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well. Said by Ataturk in 1934. The Australians and the New Zealanders, shortly known as the Anzacs, landed here on the morning of the 25th April 1915 and we have their memorial at the Anzac Bay today, a place which is highly visited by the Anzacs in the last 90 years. We also have some old reminiscence from the Second World War when we follow the Anzac coastline in our times. As this cement bunker, which was used during the Second World War. This hero, the Turkish hero, carrying the wounded British Lieutenant John Casey from his trench to the other side to bring him to safety. And he later on became the Australian Governor General in 1967, Lieutenant John Casey. The Lone Pine Memorial for the Australians is one of the biggest memorials in the Anzac area. And the Mehmetchik monument leading you to the 57th regiment which was led by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk to become Turkey's first president after the Battle of Independence was finished. Hussein Kaçmaz, oldest Turkish Gallipoli veteran with his grand-granddaughter. At Çanakbeer, statue of Atatürk where the turning of the war was decided on the 9th of August in 1915. It's a short distance when you look to the left side where the Saros Bay is, that's the Aegean Sea, and to the right of this monument is Gallipoli, and that is Çanakkale in the front. These are the Turkish trenches where Atatürk and his comrades were waiting on that day if the Allied forces had been able to go over this hillside, it was downhill all the way on the other side to Chanakale and to Gallipoli. And that would have brought the ending of the war as far as the Allies were concerned. On the Asia Minor side of Gallipoli, we have the Nusret mine laying ship as a model displayed in the museum we have just by the waterfront. It is a model. The real one is in Tarsus, and it's incredible that it is not in its original place, that the mayor of Tarsus has displayed it in his town, and this town is also world famous in our times 